And we are live. Welcome back. Ladies and gentlemen, I am one of your co-hosts, Blake Rafino. Alongside me is a very warm Joe DeLeon because he's in L.A. while I'm in the deep south freezing my arse off. Good evening, good hey, sir. Man. Hey, man, it's cold here, too. It's 59 degrees. This is cold weather. You need to respect that I'm in a cold weather you know, situation, too, here. You're not the only one who's cold. I'm freezing. You Look, <laughs> I got my vest on. I got pants on. It's cold up in these people's streets. Yeah, I'm going to say I haven't seen that outfit before. It's usually you got the home field shirt on, but no, you're you're all bundled up. What What is it there, by the way? Because I feel like it, it was, doesn't get that cold in Louisiana. It, well, see, what happens is it's so humid here that like and it had like we had like an ice storm like this morning. It was 24 degrees, felt like 16. Mm -hmm. uh, it's currently 40 degrees, feels like 29. Uh, yeah, it is cold that. up in this piece but nevertheless it's not going to be cold on the show because we got a lot of hot things to talk about obviously the biggest thing and the number one thing is joe uh, uh, <laughs> we talked about this for the last uh, seven days is it time to panic for alabama football we already have a lot of colorful language in the chat uh referring to this topic but I'm going to go as far as say this, not to spoil my take. I don't think it's panic time, but it's a huge problem. The two kids who just hopped in, like that's a, a very significant loss. And please, Alabama fans, don't do the shit that the USC fans did when, when they lost some of their top guys that were really important recruits in the 2023 class. Don't do this thing where, oh, we don't need them. Those guys were busts. They weren't even really that good. Yes, yes, Caleb Downs and Caden Proctor we're two of the best freshmen in college football. You're going to miss them. I don't know if there's even a remote possibility to maybe sway one of them to come back. It's probably too far gone. But they're going to have to find ways to counter this. And there's going to be a timeline that for uh, for them to eventually do that. Well, I, first off, welcome to relevance, buddy. That's the first thing that I tell all the Alabama fans. That's number one. And number two, it is time to panic. It 1,000%. Joe, you can't lose that many high-profile kids and that many high five-star kids. You can't, you know, lose a kid like Trey Amos, who would have been starting that corner for you last year, who I think, I, I'm being honest when I say this, I really do believe could work himself into a first-round corner. I mean, Joe, he, he didn't even really start, okay, and almost led the team in pass breakups. That's how effective, effective a guy like Trey Amos was yeah. uh, at Alabama. You can't lose a guy like Downs. You, you, you no, just, no, absolutely not. You just can't. I know Proctor had struggles. Uh, okay, well, uh, he's still going to put – Anyone who says that about Proctor, go watch the Georgia game. Go watch the Georgia game. If you really want your eyes open and you – like in all seriousness, Alabama fans can't say that, oh, Proctor was, was overrated, blah, blah, blah. The guy played one of the greatest games for a true freshman offensive lineman that I have ever seen, the way that he played against Georgia, the way that he manhandled Michael Williams. The kid's a dog, and, and all three of these guys, it, it, it's going to be hard for them to recover, absolutely. The, it, it, the Guys like this don't fall off of trees. You don't have an next man up, especially after we just watched half of the kids that were sitting behind these players go to Florida State. So, yeah, the, there is a there is room for some level of panic. Uh, welcome to relevance, buddy. That is going to be the title of my theme of my take today. Uh, so we'll talk about it. Not the only thing, um, that we will talk about Texas A&M. We're not talking mm. enough about Mike Elko bringing in the number one portal class. We will touch on that, uh, as well. Uh, you, we also have some, uh, news in the coaching world. Arizona makes their coaching higher. Uh, yeah blah uh, i don't even know why we we are bringing that one up joe but i guess that we will uh mm. tyler Barron, Ole miss another thing in the sec a couple of kids that in that great portal class that Ole miss has pulled uh some of those guys leaving but i don't want to if i'm Ole miss i don't panic on them because they're getting visits like guys like trey amos they got the walker kid that committed today i still think that they are doing some really good things in the portal so we'll touch on that as well yeah, I, uh, I'm i really su surprised, pleasantly surprised by what Louisville has done in the portal. And 
you kind of heard people talking about the class that they've put together, but when you really map it out and you look at all these kids that they brought from the G5 level, guys from the Ivy League, all of these different players that they've accumulated uh, are really talented, and they're going to cap that class off with a guy who's going to be their premier edge rusher in 2024 in Tyler Barron. Well, very much so. And listen, uh, it's a completely different scenario, okay, at Ole Miss than it is in Alabama because, look, look I, I mean, you don't expect a max exodus like what uh, uh, Alabama is going through, okay? You do expect a mass exodus or things to change around, especially defensively, with a mm-hmm. guy like Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss. I will say this, Louisville is eating their lunch right now. Like, they're going in there and taking what they want. Papa John's, stand up. Because that Papa John's NIL money is, them checks are cashing, buddy, let me tell you. Wait, he's a, I'm an idiot, I forgot. He's a Louisville guy, right? Yeah, Louisville guy. The, the stadium used to be named Papa John Stadium before for, he, you know, used all that dumb, language. Yeah, said all the horrendous things that he said. Uh, I wonder how much money he's contributed to the NIL. But, but regardless, though, the this isn't – even if Louisville was in a different conference, if they were in a more competitive conference, I'd still be making the argument that they would do damage. Like, they could be competitive in the SEC with the roster that they put together. I'm not saying they'd win the conference, but they could win eight games and, and do really well in the SEC, convert the same thing in the Big Ten. But they're playing in the ACC – with the guys that they've brought together, they could really dominate across the board with their ACC schedule and expand upon and improve upon a year that they won 10 games. They could win more than that, and they could maybe push their way to an ACC championship. Very much so. Now, we do have some questions in here with some Super Chats. Uh, Cody McGee with a $199 Super Chat says, NCAA Football 25 coming out July 12th. Can't wait. I know that EA Sports came out and said that that's not yeah. true. Let, let me let me just say this: as someone who knows Gator Dave and is really good friends with him, the guy that broke the story, there are a handful of people on this earth that Joe that do what we do. That is that is there is probably only five people in my in, in, that I know that I trust more when it comes to sourcing. Da- David Waters is one of those. If David Waters runs something, it is because he has gone to the ends of the earth to make sure it happens. He is not a breaking news guy. So you know what they're going to do? Can I tell you what, what? they're going to do? They're going to release it on July 13th just to say it wasn't true. Right. So that's kind of what I thought. They did come out. The, the, you have to bring up that they did come out and deny this, which is important to for the whole thing. But well, they didn't uh, technically I, deny it though. They just said we just haven't released a date yet to confirm it. They didn't say it wasn't coming out on the twelfth. Right. That kind of makes me feel like they didn't want to. It's the, <laughs> it reminds me of the whole Tom Brady thing uh, with his retirement, where he wants to be the one who controls the narrative. A big company like EA wants to be the ones that control the narrative that want to be able to put out uh, right. uh you know a, a very exciting promo to say this is the new game they they also don't want to have ridiculously high expectations when the expectations are already super high so if something gets delayed and they have to release this thing in September they don't want to be caught with their pants down they, they aren't just reskinning a previous game like they do with all their other shit and like what 2K does they have to build a game from scratch. They have to completely build this thing from scratch. That's why it's taken so long. So for this to you know be on the on the pathway, um, yeah, I'm I'm hoping it's the 12th. I'm absolutely I hoping it's I just want my- the game back. People are like, oh well, hadn't you seen NCAA sucks? The game sucks because have you seen Madden? I'm like, I-, I tweeted this. I'm like, three little letters, but at least for me. LSU, because I promise you, Nick Saban, let me tell you, you want to know why Nick Saban retired? Can I tell you? Why? Because he knew that Blake Rufino was going to buy that game and beat his ass 134 to zero. He knew. Um, I I will say this. Well, I was going to literally beat the shit out of them. I was going to make them have negative yards. I was going to put all the sliders up, have like 17 (laughs) interceptions. The shit was going to be exceptional. 
You're ridiculous. I, I think as long as we get dynasty mode and road to glory, I will be perfectly happy. That's all I need. I just want Joe Burrow in the game. He might be an ultimate team. Maybe. I don't know. I, I don't just know want Joe Burrow in the game. As I stare at the m memorial that I have in here in this office for Joe Burrow, it's all I want. Okay, we have another one here. Lance Mansfield says, do y'all think Ohio State can land Proctor or Downs? Um, Joe, you want to answer that first? I, I think with the amount of money that they've spent has shown that they're able to attract either of these guys. I have seen Caleb Downs' name before he even entered the portal as a possibility here for Ohio State. I, I think that that's capably possible. Do I think it's realistic? We're going to talk about where we think he's actually going to end up. I don't think it's Ohio State. Proctor is going to be a weird one. I really don't know what to do with Proctor. That would be a good fit, though. I look at a lot of these other teams that I think have their offensive line situations figured out. Like, he's not going to end up at LSU because they've got two really good tackles. Uh, Georgia's got a really good offensive line, so that doesn't really make a, lo a lot of sense. So, mm -hmm. yeah, Ohio State could make sense for, for him to yeah, end like up there. Yeah, like, you won't go to Texas, right? Because they Right, have both their tackles are phenomenal. Right. So, um, could he end up at Ohio State? It could happen. Uh, but there are a couple of tackles that are out there that are really good. Lance Hart being another. Um, so let's see where those two guys land. Tennessee is looking for some offensive linemen. They're telling what their NIL collective yep. would do. Um, so we'll, we'll keep. But I think Caleb Downs is going, like you said, Joe, to, to, to Georgia. So we'll talk about yep. that. Everybody do us a favor by hitting the like and share. Share to all those social media groups. Share to all of those social media pages. Wherever you're listening, watching on YouTube, like, subscribe, and notification bell. Congratulations, young man. We went over the 5, 5K mark in subs uh, this past week. So blew congratulations. past it. We blew, blew past, past it. it. We're on the route to 10K, baby. On the route to 10K. It's so glorious. Uh, if you're watching us on Caffeine, hello, baby. Uh, shout out to our people out there at Caffeine. And wherever you listen to podcasts, rate, review, and subscribe. You know I'm bringing it up. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you're you're suddenly the biggest fan of that platform, and we've been on there for for a month. <laughs> Half a million views on one live show, baby. I mean, to the moon. You can't slow us down. <laughs> you cannot slow us down. Uh, Never mind. I'm gonna. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do that. So, my good friends at BetOnline.ag, we're back. Is it time to pat panic for Alabama? We talk about that next. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way for you to wager on all of your favorite sports, contests, events, with the first to market odds and lines. Find reviews for all the news for each league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, college sports, esports, and even golf. Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all of your sports information for live in-game betting props and futures. Head on over to Bet Online today and use your mobile device to join and make your first sports bet. Use our promo code Believe50. That's Believe50, B L E A V 50 to receive your 50% off welcome bonus on your first deposit. That's betonline.ag. Betonline.ag. We're back. Bama isn't. All right. So, Joe, let me start off this uh, segment because I do think it's going to be a very, I don't want to say hot topic. I do think a lot of people may, especially Alabama fans, will disagree with us on this. But, look, over the last 72 hours, maybe even a little bit more, since, Al since Alabama head coach Nick Saban has retired, there have been a lot of players from Alabama that have entered the transfer portal. A lot of players have also entered the NFL draft, which a lot of people are not uh, bringing into account here. Big-time guys like Proctor, uh, 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 Caleb Downs, Trey Amos, Des Ricks, those are just some to name off the very top that have entered the transfer portal and are planning to go somewhere else. Joe, the question and the, the thought, at least, that I had brought up at least three times on the last three live shows that we've done is it time to panic for Alabama? Because I don't think DeBoer will be able to maintain and keep some of these high-level guys. And, Joe, he's not doing that. Now, let me just say one thing in this, too. 
I have seen a lot of people that either played or cover or love the SEC. And I see people coming out with videos. Should there be some sympathy for Alabama, what they're going through right now? What? And I'm like, yeah, dude. Oh, what? my God. God. Like, what are we talking about here? Welcome to relevance. Welcome to what everybody else in the country deals with. I remember when Florida was going through a transition from Dan Mullen to Billy Napier. I remember when Brian Kelly had 39 scholarship players. I remember when, well, you know, I'm actually just going to throw this out there, what Mike Elko had when he got there and now has the number one class in the transfer portal. The number one class. I know that that situation's different. He had a little bit of a head start than DeBoer. Okay. I, I mean, and here's another question. Why isn't Nick stepping in and telling these kids to stay? Why isn't he helping DeBoer? Like that's well, a- we don't we don't know if he hasn't or not, but the but the problem is here. The problem is here is that no matter what has happened and what has transpired behind closed doors has not been enough to entice any of these kids to return. Right. There's a lot of layers to this conversation, Blake. All right, let's go with the am first I, one. Am I surprised that this is happening? No. no, absolutely not. I'm not surprised. We see this as you just laid out perfectly. Whenever there is a transition of a head coach at any Power 5 program, those rosters are pulled apart for their parts. All of the elite players are going to get reached out to. They're going to get tampered with. They're going to get asked to come and play for their schools. It is just the world that we live in. And even before the, the transfer portal and NIL were at full effect, it still would happen where guys would look for ways to get out because they don't want to play for a new head coach and risk it impacting their careers. These guys are simply just doing what's best for them and their future. So no, I'm not surprised. Alabama fans should not be upset that these guys are leaving because they didn't sign up to play for Kalen DeBoer. Most of these kids probably, if you asked them to pick out Kalen DeBoer in a crowd of people, would have no idea who he is. Until he showed up at Alabama and then before this national championship run, outside of the national sphere, most people in the college football world weren't really familiar with Kalen DeBoer until he right. did what he did this year. So I'm not surprised. They're merely trying to do what's best for them. They don't want to risk sticking around because they wanted to play for Saban. They didn't show up to play for Kalen DeBoer. So, no, I'm not surprised. But to your question on if it's time to panic, it is troubling that these kids are leaving. It is extremely troubling, and I would worry on how that is going to negatively impact the product on the field. But there still is time after the spring ball transfer portal window opens for them to go and grab some guys and to clear and stop some of the bleeding. There's it's not, not a good solution. But there's it's on not the table. guys out there like that in the spring portal. Oh, I'm not, I'm not saying that they're going to find a Caleb downs, but they can at least find some football players that can fill some of the holes that are now going to be opened up. Joe, they might, they might not go nine and three. They are losing too much. Way too much. It is okay. it is time to panic from this point of view. You ready? They are coming off the most historic dynasty run of all time. This is like Brady leaving New England. It might even be a little bit bigger because, you know, it's Nick. And he's the head coach. He's bringing all those players in. It is time to panic. Joe, are you a thousand percent sure right now as we sit here today on January the 17th, 2024, the year of our Lord, that Alabama wins more than nine games, yes or no? Because I, there's no way that – Joe, mainly due to the fact of the system that they run offensively, you don't have the quarterback that you could bring in, at least at the current moment, that will get you to that place. You have guys leaving rapidly, okay, that would be not only starters, not only contributors. Joe, we're talking about all pro – I mean, all SEC, all American – potential players like it is time to panic that this is not something that you can just sit here and tell me that oh no we're Alabama we'll be fine no that's not true they did not have a plan on keeping these dudes or or doing anything to help try to retain them none of them 
Well, I okay. Just know what some of these kids are asking right now in the portal. Alabama is not matching. There's money figures to this. They are not matching. Well, that that was what I brought up last show that it, it's not commonly understood that uh, the NIL game and Alabama is actually not the best. They don't have the most amount of money. They don't spend the most amount of money. They were getting kids to come on a discount because they wanted to play for Nick Saban. So now everything is is really starting to crumble because they never thought that there was this future without Nick Saban. I understand what you're saying. I completely agree with the take that you have of losing all these guys. It absolutely is going to impact the product on the field, and they're not going to be back in the same conversation where they had one loss last year and win the SEC championship game. There are other better rosters now that all these guys are leaving that are going to beat them. And yes, nine, eight wins is on the table. I'm not going to go as far as to commit to a number yet because I made that mistake last off season and it came back to bite me in the ass. And I don't want to go down that road. I told, again. I told you not to do it. I, I, I begged you not to do it by the way. But if we recall Blake that I said when this Kalen DeBoer hire went through my biggest thing that I said for Alabama fans is to temper your expectations in year one with Kalen DeBoer because there was going to be transitional fallout for a guy in his first year as the head coach it is the natural order of things this amount of fallout things- though this is significant like are, are we how many times have we seen this though for schools that got- how many scholarship players did did LSU have when Brian Kelly took over 39 but here's the problem with that number one Ed Orgeron had just gone 500 in back-to-back years, okay? He he was a toxic chaos all around the place. Nick is leaving that leaving that program in a, in a stratosphere that Ed Orgeron only touched once in 2019. Like that it's not the same. I, I well wait, but I would ar- wait, wait, but I would argue though that this is the result of of having such a, a huge high for Alabama for as long as it did, if that makes sense. Like the, yeah, but LSU the, fa- the fallout, the fallout's going to be greater for Alabama because the minute that this run is over and that everyone was attracted and drawn to Nick Saban, all those kids are going to dip out. If that, I don't know if that really makes total sense. No, not what I'm really. To say here. Not okay. really, because I think it's apples and oranges when you compare to it. I agree with you. That you have that they're gonna have to temper their expectations. I don't think you can. I think you're gonna just have to have fun next year. And it like, <laughs> dude, you can't you can't say that to Alabama fans. <laughs> you guys should just have fun with it, man. I mean, you guys, what, are you nuts? <laughs> you a hypothetical question as it sits today. Now you can change this. Okay, <laughs> are you a thousand percent sure that when Georgia comes to town that they can win that game? Yes or no? No, they're going to lose. Are you a thousand percent? Are you a thousand percent for sure that they that Alabama could go into Baton Rouge and win? Are you a thousand percent? No, they're not sure going to them. That they can beat Oklahoma. Are you a thousand percent for sure that they can beat everybody that's on their schedule? My my point is, okay, it, it's one thing that Kalen DeBoer is a really good coach. We've seen him be a really good coach on the field. That's not really a debate that you and I have. The debate that you and I are having is is that they just don't have the dudes. Literally. Joe, they're too deep. Is going to be the freshman guys that are coming in. Now, can they bring in other guys from the portal in the spring? Yeah. We change our thoughts on, on what they're doing? Sure. But they're, they ha- it, Joe, that hasn't happened yet. Okay, so when I look at Alabama and I look at what is going on, there's not another Caleb. Joe, Caleb Downs might be the best player in college football. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. And we're going to talk about him. In, we're going to talk about him in a second. But yeah, I agree with that. Okay, so with that being said, alone, you can't lose players like that and think that you, it's not just the 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 high profile guys that are leaving. You have guys like Des Ricks who was a five star. You have guys like Trey Amos who would have started for you. You're losing too many pieces. Oh, and by the way, Joe, they're losing a lot of pieces to the NFL. My. My point is, and that's also, yeah, brother, that's a very good point. We talked about Isaiah Bond. Like, we didn't even talk about the weapons. Yeah. So they already had problems at wide receiver. So here's another another thought and question to you, okay? You're talking about a team offensively that had issues out wide and at the boundary, okay? You lost your best weapon. 
You're going to an air raid offense with Jalen Milrow. Well, yeah, again, we don't totally know. I mean, I actually wouldn't be shocked if Milrow doesn't end up deciding to enter the portal because of them well, then trying you're to going look for a different guy. Unless you bring in Will Rogers, you're potentially going to a redshirt freshman, Ty Simpson, or a true freshman. Take I, your pick. Okay, so just to to reiterate what I've what I'm trying to say here, though, I don't disagree with what you're saying. I completely agree that the product that we see with all these guys entering in 2024 is not going to be up to par with the team that just went to the college football playoff, which was already one of the weaker, younger teams that Nick Saban has ever coached. I, look, I'm not going to say that that that, that we're going to be able to be in that college football playoff conversation. It's just not going to happen with all these guys that are leaving, especially one of the best defensive backs in college football that's a future top 10 pick and one of the best freshman offensive linemen. It is going to be impossible to find guys to step right in and replace them because they're, frankly, irreplaceable players. They are that good of players. But at the end of the day, because I'm not surprised by this, this is just how things work with new coaching staffs. Guys are going to leave, and because it's Nick Saban, it's going to be tenfold because these players are going to feel disenfranchised by the fact that Nick Saban told them he was going to be there for however long and that they were going to get coached for most of their careers, and they want to go somewhere else, and they're probably going to go to the schools that were second on their list when they made their college decision a few years ago. I think the biggest piece here is that there's recoverability, which is why I don't think I'm going to – I don't want to panic. I'm going to start to worry a shit ton, but I'm not going to panic because there's recoverability in the spring to at least mitigate this. And then if Kalen DeBoer, here's when I'll actually panic, Blake. If the first recruiting class, the 2025 class, does not finish in the top 10, and when you're a brand like Alabama, oh, they're gonna that's when I'm but but that's when I'm fucking panicking. But they can't finish in the top 10. They well, that's finish. when I'm going to start panicking. I'm well, going to at least give them the benefit the of the doubt. Five, or they're in trouble. All right. I will say this. Jabbar Muhammad, the corner from Washington, uh, is going to take visits to Texas and Alabama. Adding a piece like that would be really massive for Kalen DeBoer. Right? Like, that's a good massive, corner. you know, very good corner. He had that great uh, uh, PBU on Adonai Mitchell uh, in the end zone to win the football game uh, against Texas. But they're losing too many pieces, buddy. Like, uh, you just – I don't know if it's necessarily recoverable to where they were uh, this past year. Speaking of some of these guys, Caleb Downs and uh, Proctor have entered the portal. Or – let me back up. And when you're probably watching this, Downs will already be in the portal if this is clipped. So, Caleb Downs is projected to enter the portal. Uh, Joe <laughs> – Remember when I told you and you called me tinfoil and hot conspiracy theorist that I that I thought that Kirby knew? Remember when you called me that? Yeah. You see the video of Kirby running up to Caleb Downs at the end of the game and running up to T Rob and dabbing both of them up. You mean to tell me that Nick, that Kirby was not all recording? right? Hey Joe, he he didn't talk to anybody. You see him running straight to Caleb Downs and to T Rob. He knew what he was doing. I'm Should not we... a full hat conspiracist, but it doesn't okay. matter. Caleb Downs is going to Georgia. Do you, do you want to start a, a flat earther podcast next? Is that what's next on our, well, our future? Round. All I'm saying is I know what my eyes are telling me. It's not a conspiracy theorist. Joe, okay. It, who is the co, co defensive coordinator at Georgia? Traveris Robinson. Who is Caleb Downs training to go play for next? Georgia. So how am I a conspiracy theorist when it actually happened? All right. I'm going to just breeze past that. <laughs> I, I won't disagree with it. I think that this has to be a lock unless someone like Ohio State comes to the table with some ridiculous number. It makes so much sense. He was committed to Alabama relatively early. He commits to Traveris Robinson. I mean, obviously Robinson deserves the job that he just got as the code DC, but Heck, if I'm Kirby, I might even just hire Robinson just for that chance to end up getting Caleb Downs because he's that good of a football player. I watched a little tape on him, and man, I, I, the way that he played as a true freshman is unbelievable. unbelievable. He might be the most talented true freshman defensive back that Nick Saban has ever had, and he's, that goes in line uh, with Mika Fitzpatrick. It, he's on par with him, and he's bigger, he's longer, he's more fluid. Oh. He 
he played like a three-year vet the way that he did in that SEC championship game. He is cerebral. His decision-making is phenomenal. His tackling is phenomenal. He can cover sideline to sideline. Could you imagine him and Malachi Starks playing next to each other? Could, could you I, imagine that? Yeah, I can, which makes Georgia the heir apparent favorite to win the national title, in my opinion. Man, you see fans are starting to get mad at us because we're just all we, we keep glazing Georgia. But I if this happens, I don't care. It's not glazing at this mad point. At us. They're in the chat. No, not this chat. Like if you go oh. on anytime that we post a conversation that involves Georgia that's not like a Georgia specific video. Oh, yeah. There's always there's always somebody that's like, okay, you guys gotta settle down with the with the you know, Georgia. You know what my favorite comment of this week was? What? Blake Rufino, dot 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 Georgia Homer. <laughs> Who would have thought that that would have come out? But if if they get Caleb Downs, he's also from Georgia. I don't see a way that this doesn't come to fruition. I have no sourcing on this, which I have had for a couple of guys. I don't think that this uh, there's any reason why this doesn't end up being Georgia. He's going to Georgia. I got some sourcing on it. <laughs> the kid's going to Georgia. Okay. Uh, in reference to him hitting the portal, though, his father came out with a statement today on 247 that said that he wants to make a decision within 48 hours. Huh. Well, if you want to make a decision within 48 hours, you know what you're telling me, buddy? You know exactly where you're going. Look, the risk get richer. And something that I think that, I, that I'm about to bring up if, if Downs does go to Georgia and, and makes it official there, Joe, the torch has been passed. Oh, yeah. King pre predecessor. And I do think that the guy that spent the tenure the longest with Nick Saban is going to be the one that replicates everything that he does. Um, the best secondary in the country, Joe, are they not the best secondary in the country? We talked about them all year. They, <laughs> they they're going to be more than the best secondary in the country. They might be one of the best put secondaries together that we've seen in college football if Caleb Downs does go to Georgia, but that, and that's where I think he's going. Yeah. I, I don't see a way that it doesn't end up being that I, and if, if they do that, that defense is, that might be one of the, the best safety duos in the history of college football, maybe on par or just a slight rung below what Miami had when in the early two thousands and all that stuff, when Ed Reed was there, like that's the, was it was wait were Ed Reed and it was was Ed Reed Sean Taylor there at the same time? Am I misremembering? Uh, I don't think that they were there at the same. I think what, he might have been a freshman. I don't think that they played okay. together like that. So uh, I, I think it deserves to be in that conversation then. Don't underestimate a a guy like Tyron Matthew who was a safety and and had a Heisman Trophy uh, uh, run there. Who um, was he? Who? What? Never mind. I'm not gonna. We're we're gonna open a can Tyler, of worms. Tyler Matthew, you mean the guy that follows us on follows us no. on Twitter? No, who was he? Um, Eric who was Reed. his running mate? Oh. Eric Reed. Okay, yeah, yeah, those are good. Two good players. Uh, Kaden Proctor, though, I want to really quickly talk about. Okay, let's uh, talk about him before we get this. Kid, this is going to be really weird. I, I mean, he's projected right now to end up at Iowa. And for anyone who doesn't know anything about Caden Proctor, he's from Iowa. He was originally committed to Iowa, and I think if it wasn't for that late push, he would have ended up at Iowa. So for him to go to Iowa, I'm not. I'm not going to be shocked. I really wouldn't be. I would hope somebody competitive makes a run at him and he stays in the SEC because it feels like wasted talent that he's just going to be down blocking the whole season and they're not actually going to have him doing any pass sets or anything. But I always put out some good offensive linemen into the NFL. Um, he is a very physically gifted player. He uh, he kicked the shit out of Michael Williams in the SEC championship game. Yeah. So whoever can get him, Come to the table with some bread and and maybe try to convince him. Um, so he like you said, it's already people have crystal balls out for him to go back home to Iowa. Here's what I'd say to that. Number one, why? And then number two, Joe, <laughs> you know that there's still technically a search, if I'm not mistaken, for the Iowa OC job. Make Kid and Proctor the OC. <laughs> I mean, it is so dormant that they don't even have an OC. We're talking about all these – Joe, think about this. This is how bad Iowa is on offense. You ready? 
Nick Saban retired and Kalen DeBoer became the next head coach at Alabama before Iowa could find a new somebody who would want to go coach that offense. I don't know if it was that. I think that I th- I think I, that Kirk Kirk Ferentz is just a slow moving individual. I think that that is. Uh, then I think firing. That's more around. Then you know what firing. Hey man, he's going through a lot. He just said to fire his son basically, and now I he's got to. Is, is everything in Iowa just bland? You know they should they should hire Scott Frost. I really think that that's who they should uh, should go after. You know, you know, you you pre- you're making fun of that, but I'm not. No, no, that's a serious oh, okay. take. Yeah, I'd go after Scott Frost in a heartbeat. He's a smart OC. He's a good player. He was the OC at Oregon before he ended up taking the UCF job. I, yeah, I would hire him. Championship winning coach. Yeah, uh, sure. It, was he the US, UCF? He was the head coach at UCF. Remember. That was the year that they they made up. The, yeah, when the they had just... like Sequel Griffin, you know the guy with the one hand. Um, you don't remember that team? That team was like they, you know, they claimed a national. Oh, title. I I I remember, and I remember they yeah. they played uh, LSU in a bowl game and all that stuff. And oh, they, that was the year after. That, that was, was the year. year a, that was yeah, the year they beat after. Auburn in the bowl game, but the next year LSU under Josh Heupel. Believe it or not, Josh Heupel was the head coach for that year. Yeah, that's when Heisman Burrow was activated when he got hit on that blind side. Um, I, I, I do, if I had a conversation with a kid, I would tell him to call Tennessee. I'd tell him to call Ohio state. I'd tell him to call Ole Miss. I'd tell him to call Florida all before he made his way back to Iowa, mainly due to the fact Joe is that he can become a top 10 pick because of his talent. If I, if he goes to those places, I think that there's always going to be question marks around him. If he goes to Iowa. Okay. I, I, I just well, think it's, I was put out the one position group, the two position groups that they've actually well, let me well. finish, but okay. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Finish. I was going to, I was going to say there will always be question marks on him because if that offense is that bad, what do you really make of a guy when an offense is that bad? It's like, Joe, when you see, when you see really good athletes on a really bad defense, why don't they go in the top 10? Why? Because they're surrounded by ass. Uh, I don't, I don't totally a hundred percent agree with that take, but I will say for, he should want to have the competitive spirit to want to him running to go, you know, stay at home is kind of lame. In my opinion, he should want to go to a Florida state, like Florida state's another one that I would put into the equation that could use a little bit of offensive line bolstering. I mean, shit, we're about to even talk about Louisville. I Louisville would, would be a really exciting possible landing spot. Exciting. Right. I, 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 I agree. Kentucky. Colorado was was somebody commented on one of my posts about him, but I don't think that they've got enough money to. They can to barely pay like him. Him. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting. Speaking of Louisville, you want to get to this Ole Miss thing really quickly? Yeah. Okay, so so Joe, over the last forty eight seventy two hours, kind of ironically the same what we talked about uh, Alabama. Ole Miss had some guys that they had got in the transfer portal that had flipped to. Uh, Louisville, Tyler Barron, uh, I, I forget the DB's name. Why is it, I, I didn't write it down. We talked about it in the beginning of the show. So forgive me for not remembering the young man's name. Um, it'll probably come to me. And ju- uh, Tavion Nichols. Oh, oh, yeah, so. yeah. Um, so they just got a DB commit. The kid that I know really well and saw actually five times as a senior, Amari uh, Walker uh, at Ponchatoula. I think the kid can really play was at Michigan. Trey Amos from Alabama is also going to be on a visit there soon. I'm just not worried about Ole Miss. I know that one of the pass rushers leave, but they got the kid like Perkins. I I, I don't know if ba- I told you this when Barron went there. I did I didn't know if Barron would start. That was the conversation that we had about Ole Miss. I think they're still really good. Like the, the Barron leaving does not. If the kid, and I, you know, I can't say his last name. Uh, the kid from Florida. Um, God bless it. Whatever his, however you say his last name. What position? The end. That transferred from oh, Princely Uman Mielin. There, Uman Mielin. See, I can't even say um, it when you Uma, tell me. Uman Mielin. Uman Mielin. Uman Mielin. Uman Mielin. Uman Mielin. Uman Mielin. Say that ten times fast. Hocus Pocus will appear. But nevertheless, okay, that kid had ten sacks in the SEC last year. He had double digit sacks in the league. 
So I, I'm just not worried about Ole Miss. Is it good that Louisville and Papa John is backing up a brink strip for some of these kids? Okay, cool. But it's good for Louisville, but I don't really think it affects me on my thoughts on Ole Miss, though. Yeah, I think that this is more telling for me on what it means for, for Louisville. Like, I, I didn't even have that as a gut reaction to worry about it meaning something was up with, with Ole Miss. If there was a problem with Ole Miss and checks clearing, we would have seen a more – you know, bigger group of guys like Walter Nolan probably would have been one of the first that would have flipped his commitment to go elsewhere. So I'm not really worried from the, 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 the old miss angle, like what you just talked about, they brought in a lot of players. So he might've been like a secondary rusher. So why would you go split time with guys when you could go to Louisville, play against some mediocre ass offensive tackles and have 10 to 12 sacks in 2024 I looked though at this whole group, and there's a reason why I wanted to talk about this, Blake. What they've done in the portal is is really fantastic. You mean, you mean Louisville or what, Lu Miss? what Louisville's done? Correct. The, the roster that they've put together through the portal, and we've talked about how sometimes the Lu the uh, the portal building thing doesn't totally work out. But I think that the group of guys that they have to fill some of the roster holes is going to help them succeed. They're replacing running backs, and they bring in Penny Boone, who rushed for 1,400 yards at Toledo. They need receivers after you know Jamari thrashed. I don't know if he declared or not. Let me double-check on that. Colin Lacey comes in from South Alabama, who had 1,300 yards and one, was one of the most productive receivers in the country this past right. year that nobody talked about. They added two really good tight ends, and Jaleel Skinner from Miami, Mark Redman from San Diego State. But most importantly, I love the fact that Thor Griffith was the guy, the premier player for them. I knew you were going to go with the Harvard man. I that, knew. No, 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 no. I, I, I've been watching this kid for two years beat the shit out of the Ivy League interior offensive lineman. He is compact, low to the ground. He could be Jerjon Newton, who was at Illinois for Louisville this upcoming year. He is a monster. He is strong. It's all hell. And I think that you got him and Tyler Barron and then – They've got another kid on the other edge that I'm blanking on his name that was also really good this past year. So this this defense looks phenomenal, and I think that they're going to do serious damage in the ACC in uh, in 2024. They've done really well in the portal. Did you know that they actually have a guy named Blake Ruffin that plays safety they got in the portal? Just, he's that. one O away from having the same name as me. I agree with everything you just said, Joe. I think it's really good for Louisville. I'm not going to put them above Florida State. I don't think that they run it outside of Florida State because I still think Florida State and even Clemson could come back. I, I, I think Clemson would be third in this scenario. Miami's still in there. Look, I know Louisville played for the ACC championship game. I think that they're still going to be good. They're still the contender. But I think for me and watching what Florida State has done, if you're going to be the man, you got to beat the man, Joseph. So for me, I, I, I don't fully disagree with what you're saying. I would just pump the brakes just a little bit when it comes to saying that, you know, Louisville would be there. I still think that there might be two teams there because I still think there's two teams more talented than they are for Let me give an example. Okay. If my Miami on paper is more talented than Louisville yeah. right, right now. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing that we're questioning is crystal ball. I mean, Cam Ward could go absolutely stupid in a game versus Louisville. Now, I don't know if they play. I hadn't even looked at this. Uh, cool. But regardless they do. of that, okay, you play Cam Ward. Joe, there's no telling what Cam Ward can do. Now, Cam Ward's really streaky. We talked about him. My, my point is they are a contender. I just don't I, – I don't know if they're there yet. I know they play for the ACC this year. I get it. Here's one thing I'll say about Louisville, and you and you picked on me a little bit this year when I said this about them. Dude, they play fast. They play physical. Ron English and the boys. I mean, not Ron English. Uh, Brom and the boys got them dudes absolutely going crazy when it comes to how they just play football in general. I do like the culture that's being built at Louisville for sure. Again, contender Yes, need to see them beat Florida State, and I still think they're not as talented as Miami, but I will give them that they're a contender. I see. I don't. My biggest thing is I don't think it totally matters that they're not. They're they're not gonna. It's hard for them to be as talented as Miami 
and Florida State, the way that they've recruited and, and built through the portal, all that stuff we've talked about. It. They're two clearly better, more talented teams. But I think that their roster building has at least put them a slight step back. But the biggest thing here is with a roster in his first year, Jeff Brom put that team together really quickly in his first year and went won 10 football games. Now they got smoked in the ACC championship game and couldn't move the ball. But I think from an in-game coaching standpoint, a preparation standpoint, Brom is one of the best coaches in college football that doesn't get enough recognition and appreciation for what he's capable of doing. So I think as long as he's close and he's within striking distance, he 1,000% can show up and beat a team like Miami or a team like Florida State. It does not look like they're playing them this year, so maybe they face them in the ACC championship game. They're good enough to maybe eventually match up with them and play a close football game. I love to remind everybody when he was at Purdue, he freaking beat Ohio State when he had no reason to. So it's he can he's one of those guys that any game, as long as he can put up a fight, he can find a way to win. We do have some breaking news. Oh shit. Former Texas co-offensive coordinator, Houston offensive coordinator, Alabama analyst, and former OC at Alabama, and former South Alabama OC, Major Applewhite, is going to be now the new head coach at South Alabama. How, how, about, how crazy is this? South, you- Al- South Alabama made a better head coaching hire than Arizona did. It's a good point. Major Applewhite's a good coach. Who would have ever thought that we would do a breaking news bump for the South Alabama? The only coach reason they I... moved quick. They moved quick. I'll give them credit for that. All right. Well, the only reason that I did that is because Major Applewhite is from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Oh, there we are. There's your there's your real reasoning. That all makes plenty of sense now. Hey, yeah. I... Uh you want to make me? You want to make a call and get Major Applewhite on the show? You wouldn't be scoffing then. Get him on the. I, that'd be cool if he came on the show. You, you, know, you <laughs> talk too much shit. I'm worried about what you say. I didn't call, talk any shit. I think it's a good hire. I think he's a, he's he's been successful, uh, and I think South Alabama does a good job getting a a guy with a lot of background. Um, and you talked about. It. I think that's a more exciting hire than the freaking Arizona one. I like Major a lot. Look, he's he's had some up and downs. Uh, you know, I, I think he's a good OC. I think he's a really good coach. He's a better person. Okay, um, so happy happy for a guy, Major Applewhite, for uh, uh, becoming the next head coach of South Alabama. They did move quick. They did move quick. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joe, speaking on South Alabama, Cody McGee sends a four ninety nine dollar super chat. Says, how does hiring South Alabama's head coach as defensive coordinator? affect their recruiting we kind of talked about this in the video we did yesterday so if you want like a more in-depth answer um maybe check that out if you haven't already but the i I think it's it's strong for them that he has ties to the region and that he's from you know he's from arkansas he played it at arkansas and he was a coach at south alabama so he knows you know the the high school ranks it's it's going to be easier to recruit the area as the defensive coordinator already having relationships with those head coaches and now it's easier that you can walk into a room and instead of saying hey we want your you know your 10th best guy we want your best guy we want your best players that you can provide us that that want to come play for for alabama so i think that's strong that that he made a hire that was connected to him and then that was also um, somebody who is uh, from the state and coached in the state. Very much so. Um, I, I just think they're in trouble. I, I don't know if he if he helps or hurts that, but it can't hurt it. But I don't think he really he helps it too much. All right, Joe. What 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 is next that we have on the docket? I think we need to go to a little bit of a break. But what is next on on? on- uh, let's do a And M because I don't think we're going to talk much about Brent Brent Brent. Okay, sounds good. Let's talk about our good friends over at Home Field Apparel. Don't go anywhere. We're back next. Arizona, who, by the way, just had nine players. Joe, within the last 30 minutes, have had nine players enter the transfer portal. Man, it is not going to be good for Arizona. We'll talk about that in Texas A&M, the number one portal class in the country. we get to that next. Rafino and Joe Show is brought to you by Home Field Apparel, which is the best, without a doubt, premium collegiate apparel brand that is out there. They have over 150 different colleges that you can choose from, whether you're an Illinois fan or a Rutgers fan, maybe you're an LSU fan like Blake, or maybe you're an Alabama fan. 
whatever it is, even Idaho, they have so many different designs for so many different football programs that I can guarantee you're going to find some great stuff to help root for your favorite team. I've already gotten my Notre Dame stuff. Blake has his LSU stuff. Make sure you head on over to homefieldapparel.com to check out your team's collection of clothing apparel that they have on the website. And when you do so, when you check out, make sure you use promo code Rafino Joe to get 15% off your order. That is R U F F I N O Rafino Joe. Head on over to homefieldapparel.com and get your college gear today. Something that Jane Daniels will hear in the first round, and I can't wait for that glorious day because that means my co-host Joe has to eat a hat. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Texas A&M is absolutely killing the portal right now, Joe. They are currently the number one class in the transfer portal as it currently sits on this day, bringing in guys like Des Ricks, Trey Watson, uh, Dorian Hinton, and I know that you're going to talk about your favorite guy, so I'll let you go ahead and talk about him. But what have you seen with this A&M transfer portal class that you like? Yeah, I think A&M, from the jump, they might not, you know, they're not they're not going to immediately be a 10-win team. It's going to take a little bit of time. But God damn what Mike Elko has, Mike Elko has done in, in building this roster and, and getting all these defensive pieces. Some of them are only going to be there for a year. But I, I look at the importance of bringing in a guy like Des Ricks who – was one of the top corner prospects that was a guy who reclassified that's really talented, ends up going to Alabama, transferring now to Texas A&M. He's a building block piece. To get all these younger players is important, not for year one, but year two and year three to fill some of those holes that you're dealing with with a lot of premier players that entered and found other destinations or declared for the NFL draft. But I repeatedly keep saying this, to get Nick Scourton in your first year to have a potential likely first round pick guy that if he didn't get the right coaching, maybe doesn't end up being a first rounder into your offense. Scourton's a really good, or sorry, your defense. Scourton's a really damn good player. He is a physical, aggressive guy. He's got a nasty spin move. He's got really good hands. Uh, this defense might upset some teams. I, I wouldn't be shocked if we don't see a random team next year have like, four turnovers and give up like four sacks. And we're saying, how the hell did Texas A&M um, uh, upset this team? I'm not going to go there yet. Okay. Because they are replacing a lot of pieces. Yes. Right? Like they are replacing guys like Walter Nolan, LT Overton, and some of those dudes. I like Nick Scourton. I think he's one of the best edge rushers that will come out in next year's class. I like Scooby Williams, the linebacker from Florida. I even like uh, B.J. Mays, the kid from UAB. I think it's really underrated getting a guy like Des Ricks. Let's see what happens with Des Ricks. Didn't really, you know, he reclassified, didn't really see the field this past year. So what do you really get out of him? We'll see there. Um, I, I do think that Mike Elko is having to rebuild a roster, and he's doing it a lot, a lot of the same ways we've seen first-year coaches on how they rebuild and using the transfer portal. I I, I don't I, I think that they will be fine. I think they'll be better than what they were with Jimbo. How much better? I I just don't know yet. I think I still think that they have a lot of question marks. How do they look defensively? Joe, how do they even look offensively? Because you still have guys like Evan Stewart that have left that building. Now, the ultimate question that I look at is, yes, you bring in a guy like E.J. Smith, the running back from Stanford. You do have some really good pieces there like Moss uh, and Owens. But I just – like they brought in Wesley Watson, the kid from Kansas State, the wide receiver. I I, I mean, I'm not necessarily scared about that. You know, like I, I – and so I, I I agree with what you're saying. They have brought in a lot of really good pieces. They I do think that they could get to nine wins, believe it or not. I think they'll be eight and four. I ran, hover around eight and four, nine and three. Got a lot of good players, but Joe, I just can't go there yet. Now I know that yeah. Kyle's back, but just can't go there yet. Yeah, I'm not gonna confidently bang on the table here and do the Texas A&M is gonna win ten games. They're gonna be really good this year. No, yeah, I'm not. I'm down, Billy Lucci. 
uh, I'm not going to say that the, the expectation needs to be pretty, pretty hampered for Texas A&M this upcoming season. But I think my point here is still pretty strong. They're going to be a well-coached defense. I They've got a lot of premier blue chip guys playing in that defense. Mike Elko is a wizard in terms of his preparation and development of guys that I, I'd have to, I want to look at their, their schedule really quickly. Cause I, I, I think that there's going to be one they got, game. They got a tough, they got a tough schedule. They got, a I, know, I, I know they do. Um, I, I just think that there's going to be one game this year where we'll be like, holy shit. How did Texas A&M win? How did Texas A&M pull out that game? Because they just have such a good defensive performance and maybe Connor Weigman goes off. I, and you know, maybe that, maybe that's Missouri who they that play really early on in the season. Man. I think that'd be a pretty big upset to pull out, pull that out against Missouri. And maybe uh, it's, maybe it's against Texas. Maybe Texas is a team that you could caught, you know, could catch sleeping a little bit at the end of the year. I, I think that there's, there's a lot be, of potential. That's going to be a big rivalry game, Texas and A&M. Both teams vehemently hate one another. I don't think you're going to catch Texas slipping on anything. Uh, well, maybe LSU. They can maybe catch LSU slipping. That's at home. I'm going to. I mean, they did catch LSU slipping two years ago. They were six and six. LSU was. Yeah, they were six no and two. Six. No, no, no. Two years ago, when no. you guys were well, in the SEC championship game, and you guys missed out on the playoff because because of, of that game. Hey, you bring up Marshall all the damn time, okay? I, I, I get one every so often. Notre Dame lost to Marshall, bud. Y yeah, exactly. There we go. <laughs> Don't bring up LSU and in, in, in negative content ever again. Um, yeah, I, I, I do think there's a potential. I like Mike Elko a lot. I, I again just want to. I, I want if I'm just being objective, like and not a fan. I, if I'm a fan of AM, I would want to be really, you know, intrigued, excited. It feels like a lot of energies there. You're bringing in the number one portal class. I think that changes things because I think you get better on the offensive side of things from play calling. I think you get a, 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 on a bet. Quite honestly, I just think you're going to be better over, all around from a play calling from the defensive side of things. I just think that they're a better overall team, even though, Joe, right now, Actually, they're a better team because of coaching. They don't have better players or, or talent, but they just are better coached. That's why I think they'll be a better team. Yeah, the better coaching is the big part here. I, I think that no they retained also some of their key pieces. The better coaching is going to really show up, and I, I'm curious how quickly it does. Does it show up week one against Notre Dame? Does it show up down the line like in those games that I talked about against Missouri, against LSU, against Texas? They're good enough to find ways to steal wins. I think it's realistic to say that this is a, an eight-win football team potentially in, Texas in 2024. Eight Texas eight and four. It's the, it's their calling card. Wait, wait, but let's be honest here though. Elko first year eight and four is a huge accomplishment with all the guys that left compared to Jimbo's version of eight and four. Depends at the end. on how you look getting to that eight and four. It's not that you lose four games. It's how you got there. Like, if you played all these games. Fair. Top, like, if they, Joe, if they're defensively. You know, like, if, if they duke it up. Joe, if they look like yeah. Duke. Yeah. If they look like Duke. And, which, by the way, Duke upset Clemson week one. Remember? Everybody was like, remember, it was on a Monday night. And you were, you were, <laughs> you were losing your godforsaken mind. You thought that this season was going to be Notre Dame's because. You know, week zero and week one, they look good, but try to tell you they didn't. Anyway, all I'm just saying is I I I, I could see where you're going uh uh with that one. Okay. Um very quickly, Arizona made a new head coaching hire. Yeah. Um this was the cheapest possible option. Blah. I I I think that this was the direction that they went in. They previously interviewed Brent Brennan, when they hired their last head coach, Jed Fish, he comes from San Jose State. His total record, 34 and 48. Not good on paper, but same time, he's doing it at San Jose State. Not exactly a, a recruiting hotbed 
to get guys to come play. I will say it's a little worrying to see all these kids hop in the portal, but it's just part of the process. There's going to be yeah, a lot of kids nine that kids into the portal in the last 30 minutes. Apparently, Noah Fafita wants to stick around. And if Noah Fafita stays, I will say this. This is where the, the, you know, the optimism comes into play for them to be decent in the Big 12 in, in his first year. Last year, their starting quarterback, Siobhan Cordero, has a very similar build and skill set. Is smaller quarterback, mobile, quick feet, you know, quick release, all that stuff at San Jose State. Remember what he did to USC last year? We were like, oh, right. shit. I think that is – it's positive – for Noah Fafita this first season that this is who he's going to be working with. I think it's a high floor hire. The ceiling is really freaking low, though. Like, I don't think mm -hmm. that they can win more than eight games with him. I, I just oh, don't. Eight games? That's me being optimistic. I, I, don't, I don't think... No, I'm well, not saying... I'm saying in his, in his time in Arizona as the head coach, his whole career at Arizona, there's way better teams with more money. Joe, you just convinced me that your weed just kicked in saying that they could win eight games. Are you on crack? There, <laughs> buddy. There's I'm saying that that's absolute best case scenario that they maybe win eight games. If Arizona, at some wins, point. Eight, if Arizona wins eight games next year, Jesus is coming. I'm not saying next year. I'm saying that in Brennan's entire coaching tenure at Arizona, his oh, ceiling. I he can, meant next year is no, 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 no. General, I'm saying I'm saying he will never surpass eight, eight. Put wins. down the weed. I think Arizona State's in a better position than Arizona is. Oh, Arizona State, there. I mean, they suck. Dillingham's a good coach, dude. I like him too, but they they're so bad off. Underwhelming hire for an underwhelming uh, uh, school. Expect nothing less. You don't. They don't take it seriously. So they had to shop at Walmart because they're on a budget right now. All, Walmart, they're at the Dollar Tree. <laughs> uh, I hate when schools don't take sports seriously. It really drives me nuts. Well, I, well, it, I take that a step further. I hate it when schools don't take their goddamn finances seriously and they put themselves in this situation because they they were taking it seriously. They were, and then they dug themselves this stupid hole because some idiot doesn't know how to operate an Excel spreadsheet. Worst accountant in history. He must be from Arizona State. Um, <laughs> blah. Just blah for me. I, I I don't like it at all. I don't yeah. like it. All right. We got one more thing before we get out of here. Cody McGee says, don't know if this was a topic on any of our, our tonight's show. Uh, any thoughts on Harbaugh saying that he wants immunity on his contract extension from the NCAA allegations? Joe, I think it's a good question. You want to go into that? Yeah. Um, I – I don't really totally know what to make of that. I, I I still really don't think that he ends up back at at Michigan. I don't know how Michigan has any control in that. That's the that's the biggest thing for me. I think what he means by immunity, what Harbaugh means by immunity is is that he would have a buyout, right? Like his contract. Oh, would have a buyout, and if oh. he were to be fired because of the NCAA stuff, he wouldn't get that buyout. I think. Here's here's what gives it a little bit of hope, okay, about Harbaugh potentially not going back to the NFL. Joe, there's a chance that he could get that in there and they just hold on to him until he's unsuspended. I mean, Joe, he's oh already, my God. you know, look, he's already facing eight games or, or, or nine games or six game suspension, whatever it was. How much more is he going to get suspended? What are they going to suspend him for half the season next year? I, I, I mean, I, mean I, I don't actually wouldn't be surprised if they don't suspend so, him a whole season. Well, even if they suspend him a whole season and he gets immunity and Michigan doesn't want him to, doesn't want to fire him, uh, would you not take that deal? Because I sure as hell would take that deal. Yeah, I, I just – the way that he's acted and the amount of interviews he's already done this quickly, I really just – I think his agent's just trying to see what's on the table. And I also think – I think this is more of a – an angle to say to the NFL teams that if you guys really badly want Harbaugh, if you really want him as your head coach, you got to be willing to pony up a lot of control, the That's money necessary point. to get him there. I think that this is more of a contractual negotiation. I, I, I really don't think he goes back to me. The amount of guys that have already entered the NFL draft and especially JJ McCarthy doing it tells me that they knew something. Um, 
I don't agree with that because not a lot of kids are hitting the portal. No, not the portal. I'm talking about the draft. There, there's been yeah, but teams Colson and actually, McCarthy declaring is the big thing. It's orgy time. Why? Okay, we're not talking about Michigan. It's, I, it, I, is that I not, hope that I hope orgy retires from football because he has some sort of other lucrative opportunity to start his career early after school. So we never have to talk about Alex orgy ever again. <laughs> I just said, I just said it was orgy time. That's his name. What do you want me to say? Like, you know what, what do you doing. want me to say? You know what you're doing. Did you see I somebody? No we, I have no posted, idea what I'm doing. We posted that video and somebody commented. <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad to know that this is no longer a family friendly show. <laughs> the show has never been family friendly. You say pause, and that's what she said three to four times an episode. You can't uh, give me opportunities like that. Again, uh, Orgy, I we, somebody you were saying we need to give him an NIL deal. I might pay him to retire so that you. <laughs> I want I want <laughs> Rafino and Joe show. <laughs> To do an NIL deal with Alex Orgy. Uh, let's see if... Wait, let me look up. Alex... It's Orgy time. Let's see it, really quickly if there's like a way to offer him NIL money on the, the Michigan website. Because there sometimes is. Okay, no, there well, isn't. Okay, well, if there was, I was going to do it right then and there. Uh, listen, I do agree with you. I think that it could be his agents trying to... Um, negotiate some kind of deal here. But if this is legit and he gets immunity from Michigan where they won't fire him and they'll give him a buyout, Joe, I 100% take it. I 1,000% take it because the kid, the guy just won a national title at Michigan. Michigan, Joe. I mean, you could be on track for being the next, you know, doing what Ohio State do, did and running the Big Ten. I, I I would not give up on Harbaugh. I would continue uh, to try to work and, and negotiate a deal to keep him there. That's what I do. I, I, um, I, no, I was just gonna say I'm I'm really now sucked into uh, Alex figuring, Orgy. I'm trying to figure out if where his You're nil contact is. You're shut up! <laughs> shut up! I can't. <laughs> I will find a way that we can get in contact with his his his, his people. There's got to be a way. I don't. So you could have used any vocabulary in the human's language, and you said, "I'm getting sucked into orgy." All right, all <laughs> right. I don't. He he. There's got to be some sort of an nil contact somewhere. It's got to be something. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll figure it out. Sorry. We'll figure it out. I know he's Elk is, is pretty upset. He, you know, he's an Ohio State fan. He's he's pretty upset in the chat, but it's okay, Elks. You you got the best running back duo in the country. That's all that matters. Okay, we will see y'all again Sunday, right? Yeah, he's yeah, Sunday. Yeah. Okay, see y'all again Sunday. Y'all have a good rest of your week. Stay warm. Peace.